Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today we're going to talk about how to do a matte finish with spray cans. So I've had a lot of people ask me how to do flat finishes and, and what steps are involved and stuff like that. And a lot of people ask me specifically about spray cans because they don't have spray equipment, which is fair. Uh, matte finishes are very similar, the way that they're done, um, very similar to gloss finishes, except that they use matte clear coat essentially and uh, they don't need polishing really. So, when you're doing matte finishes with something like a catalyzed polyurethane with a spray gun, you're going to need a matting agent for it. If you're doing it with lacquer, you're going to get a lacquer that comes in a lower degree, like a 10 degree, instead of a 100 degree, which is full gloss. Uh, and when you're doing it with spray cans, you're simply going to look for ones that say matte on them, or flat. So I've got my flat black, and my matte clear. Aside from that, it's going to be essentially the same. So I'm just going to demonstrate this by just painting this piece of plywood. This was sealed up, I think, with shellac a while back, so it's fairly smooth. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do the primer on it anyway, which basically would make up for not doing that step. And then uh, we're going to move on to the black and the clear. So the, the spraying technique is similar to all the other spraying techniques that you've seen me do. Uh, you can maybe put it on just a touch later with the color, but I wouldn't. I would just follow the exact same technique. So you've already seen me do this probably a few times, but let's go for it. So I'm just going to start off with my primer here, which I've shaken thoroughly prior to spraying it. I'm going to make sure that, uh, just like I've shown you guys in the past, I get that 50% overlap on my strokes. I realize the paint isn't coming out of here all that quickly, so I compensate um, by just making my strokes slightly closer together because the pattern's a bit smaller. I've done two coats of primer now, about 10 minutes apart, and they're looking pretty good. I've waited just under 10 minutes now, and uh, that second coat is almost dry. There's a little bit of sheen left on it, so it's not quite there yet. And it's pretty smooth. Um, that being said, I'm gonna give it a quick scuff anyway, just to be on the safe side, and I recommend that uh, if you're at all worried about adhesion or anything like that, you do the same. So what I'm going to do, again, to be on the safe side, is I'm going to let that dry probably, well, ideally you'd let it dry a day or two. Uh, I'm doing a quick tutorial here, so I'm probably going to let it dry about 20 minutes. And then I'm going to give it a very light scuff with some 800 grit paper. Now, if you rush your sanding, if, you, if you're not sure and you rush your sanding, you will cause your paint to pill up. It'll clog up your sandpaper, it'll scratch the paint, it might even like cling and roll up a little bit. Um, so you can make a big mess doing that. So don't rush your sanding, give your primer time to dry properly before you do it. Once I've got that sanded, which I'm going to do off camera because you guys know how to sand stuff, I'm going to be applying two coats of my matte black. So we will come back for that part. probably noticed that that went on really fast. Uh, this is a brand new can and it was spraying pretty quick. So just, this is a good opportunity to point out that when you are spraying, test out your can, have a look at how it's spraying, and you might have to make adjustments because of that. When I sprayed that, that went way faster than when I sprayed the primer, uh, which is kind of an old can, maybe not as full. Might even have a little bit of a clog in the nozzle, I'm not really sure, um, because I'm not the only one who uses that one. So have a look at how it's spraying, and if a ton of paint is coming out, then you're going to be able, to, you're going to have to move faster, and maybe spread your uh, your passes out a little bit, so you don't end up with runs. That's the two coats of black done, ten minutes apart. <clears throat> Just enough time to, to let it flash off. Uh, you'll notice that the matte paint dries very quickly compared to a lot of gloss paints, so. Keep that in mind when you're doing this. Now it's time to apply the clear. This is also a matte product, matte clear. Um, so I'm gonna give this a good shake. It's been just under 10 minutes since I applied my second coat of black. I'm gonna keep to that timing, keep to the uh, 
the flash off and recoat times here rather than letting the black dry and sanding it. And I'm just going to go ahead and start spraying this. So that's my first coat of clear. You'll notice that that one went on fairly quickly as well. Again, a brand new can. And again, keep that in mind so you don't put runs in your paint. Um, a fairly frequently asked question about this is do you need clear with matte finishes? Because in a lot of circumstances, the clear is there to add gloss and add depth and everything for the finish and not just to protect it. The thing about matte finish paint is it's, it's not super durable, if you ask me. <laughs> it's kind of missing that like hard shell of gloss on the outside to protect it from from being like rubbed out and polished by accident or from uh, having UV rays affect it so significantly because on a gloss finish they reflect so I think the clear coat's an important aspect even for a matte finish where it's not adding that gloss I think it's important for the purpose of you know protecting it and it also adds just a touch of depth but Really, the look doesn't change all that much. It's just there to keep that that uh, matte paint underneath from developing shiny spots really quickly and stuff like that because the clear is going to be a little bit harder. Before someone asks, and I know someone will, uh, you probably shouldn't do this on your car with spray cans. I've seen quite a few cars where you can clearly tell that someone tried to paint them matte black with spray cans because they're streaky and they start fading to like this purplish color because, as I said earlier, matte finish doesn't really protect against UV rays the way a nice high quality paint job does with gloss. Even a high quality matte paint job with a matting agent in your um, catalyzed polyurethane clear coat with good UV protection, that's okay. You know, that'll protect your black and it'll stay black. That's what they use on actual paint jobs like that from the factory and stuff. But if you're trying to do it with spray cans, the sunlight's going to fade it, it's going to turn an unattractive shade of purple. Not that I don't like purple, just this isn't a good purple. And uh, you'll probably get it all streaky and stuff, because let's be honest, painting large surfaces with spray cans is difficult. So maybe just don't do that. That'd be my thoughts on it. That's it. Two coats of clear. Uh, you can do three if you want, but I only did two, ten minutes apart. I'm not using this for anything. There was really no, no reason for three. And that's what we're left with. A, the lighting in here is terrible, I apologize. But that's it. Flat back, a black finish. Um, this is the wood's not very well sanded over here, don't worry about that. But you can see that it's kind of a nice flat black. If it's still like, even the flat black you can see has a little bit of sheen to it. Um, not as much as the satin, but still a little bit. And if that's a problem for you, you're going to kind of have to scuff it back. If you decide that it is too shiny and you do want to scuff it back, <coughs> what I like to use for that is just scotch bright, either gray or white. The gray is a little bit more abrasive. This isn't a great idea, honestly, but uh, some people really want a matte finish. So just gently, barely touching it, and go over it with this. Sometimes it's better to stay with one direction, but uh, I don't know. You'll get an even slightly matter finish if you kind of do it in circles, but again, very gently. Be careful. And that'll give you that, that really not shiny at all look. Uh, I really don't recommend doing that. You should probably just leave it with the matte finish that you get from the matte finish spray can. But if you're adamant that you want it to look even duller than that, that's the option. So I hope that cleared things up for anybody who's looking to do a matte finish paint job, particularly if they're looking to do it with spray cans. That's the process that I use if I'm doing it with spray cans. If I'm doing it with something other than spray cans, like if somebody actually orders something in a matte finish from me, uh, I follow the processes that you will have seen in my other videos for either painting with polyurethanes or painting with nitrocellulose lacquers. And again, with a polyurethane, I just use a matting agent. And with the lacquer, I simply use a non-gloss uh, like a 10 degree type lacquer. So hope that helps. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to let me know. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.